My name is Navdeep Jussel. Um, I practice in Lakeland, Florida as an interventional pain physician, and my primary specialty is uh, physiatry. I'm going to talk a little bit about a poster presentation um, that will be presented at the New York and New Jersey SIP meeting, um, talking specifically about the mild treatment outcomes in patients with uh, presence of uh, foraminal narrowing. So the onus for this, this poster was to really evaluate how the mild procedure, um, how their outcomes are for patients with not only hypertrophic ligamentum flavum, um, but, but also how, how when you do this mild procedure, patients are impacted um, even with the presence of uh, foraminal narrowing. And we obviously know that this procedure is indicated those with patients with LSS with neurogenic claudication. We're gonna look for the ligament. We're gonna look for at least 2.5 millimeters of, of hypertrophic ligamentum flavum to debulk. But we wanna make sure that we understand that, that physicians aren't really excluding patients um, with, with also um, other cofactors such as foraminal narrowing. Because um, oftentimes we realize when you exclude such a patient population, you're really excluding a patient to receive an outstanding therapy that's not only safe, but efficacious. And here we actually show a poster to, to really show, show those types of results. So we have mild patients recordings that were done across 11, uh, 11 sites or 11 centers with, with um, outstanding colleagues. And we studied 413 patients retrospectively. And out of these 413 patients, we saw 302 patients with foraminal narrowing, and we saw 111 patients with no foraminal narrowing. So if you think about the data, this really shows um, a typical type of patient population that presents with LSS, those with not just central canal stenosis, but also patients with cofactors that presents with neuroforaminal stenosis, um, those with facet hypertrophy, but really, we're going to really show that patients actually present, in fact, 302 present with foraminal narrowing. And we studied these patients out, you know, one to six months, and we followed them up from a, a VAS or a visual analog scale perspective. And these were recorded um, and compared to their baseline findings. From our baseline findings, we saw that these patients typically hovered in the, in the eight out of 10 or a VA score of eight out of 10. Um, and we saw a significant improvement, um, at least a drop of about 50%. So from an eight to a four, about one to six months out. What was very interesting about this data specifically was that there was really no significant difference in terms of the responder rate um, between those patients that received the treatment of the mild with those that had foraminal narrowing versus those that did not have foraminal narrowing. In fact, those that had foraminal narrowing in our study were about 76.6% that actually had the responder rate, and then 78.4% that did not have foraminal narrowing had, had a good responder rate as well. So if you can see, it was a very similar responder rate from those that had versus that those that did not have foraminal narrowing. And so from a conclusion standpoint, um, I really wanna make this clear that because both responder rates were similar, um, with no significant difference between patients with or without foraminal narrowing that underwent the mild procedure with a significant BAS pain reduction, I really want to hit home that patients with foraminal narrowing can really benefit from the debulkment of the ligament. Um, and, and I think the hypothesis is that when we do this um, decompression or posterior decompression with the mild procedure, we are in fact relieving pressure on the nerves in the central canal. And so again, if we go back to a simple phenomena of a small change in volume is a large uh, change in pressure, we can see how these patients do really well. So again, really, really trying to hit the home that those patients with foraminal narrowing should not be excluded from such a safe and efficacious procedure for their LSS with neurogenic claudication symptoms. So I, I think this data is, is tremendous because it should help those physicians that are skeptical about treating the mild procedure for those patients with cofactors. I know I, I talk to a lot of colleagues um, who are questioning whether they should offer a mild procedure with patients with not only the LFH, but with cofactors of facet hypertrophy or foraminal stenosis. And, and I, would, I would really challenge them to look at the data and show that, yes, you should. Um, if patients have foraminal stenosis or foraminal narrowing, you should treat the patient with um, the mild procedure if they are um, following um, um, signs and symptoms of LSS with neurogenic claudication and they fit the criteria of something that you can debulk posteriorly uh, with the mild procedure. 
I think it's a it's an incredibly safe procedure. We've proven time and time again that it's efficacious from from RCTs, um, and I think this data will will challenge you to think uh, more about utilizing the mild uh, therapy for for these patients with LSS.